Andrew's got the sumo on the 74 now. He's going to go and level some ground off where we put that drain and leave the compaction where we fill the drain in. A bit cold last night. Frost on these cars. A lot of fertilizer to get delivered now. The spray I was putting on on Saturday night was actually quite hot. So I didn't really want it to be frozen this morning because it might stress the plant a bit too much. So fingers crossed it'll be okay. This is where we brushed up the other day. When we were putting the rack in the workshop, we tied it up. It doesn't half look a lot better. The concrete now, it's not got a layer of mud on it. So last night, because Ian was talking to me, I drove off with the pipe still connected and I've snapped it off. Luckily, it didn't damage the tank, the tank and snap it off the tank or anything off the back of the sprayer. So anyway, we're going to have to take them jubilee clips off and refit that. Me and Ian have just been looking at this racking and we've decided that because you can shake the washers into the front and put the dividers in, we can get that whole row along the top into one and then the same with that one because they're all small. And then, and then we can get basically eight 16 spur trays to fill up with other stuff that we might need. So we're just going to swap the stickers over now. There we go, that's a far better use of space. So now all them are empty, but I'm going to rearrange it so then five fit down there. This sheet here is another fine example of why I'm glad I've got this spray out and the size that it is, thanks to you guys, is the fact that this tank full is 5,200 litres. Tank on this holds 5,600. The previous sprayer held 3,000 and the one I was originally going to get held 4,000. So by the fact that I've got a 5,600 litre tank, it means I can fill up once and where I'm driving is 20 minutes away so I can get it all done in one tank full rather than backwards and forwards. So that's at least an hour saved just today. Dad's loading wood chip. Rob is a cranky about the wind. He's off the wind of this on the dairy on. And he is stock taking. Spray is full, ready to go spraying, but uh, Rob's got stuck with this area on. Andrew's in the same field, but they've got the strap with him. We're gonna run up with the buggy and take him a strap. After 15 minutes of searching and remembered where it was, it's by the new gateway. So at least I get to test the new gateway out with the buggy. I'm gonna drive out of it now. So Andrew's sumo in this now, get rid of some of the water and compaction from where these drains have been put through. And Rob's got stuck there by the pond. Tow him out now. Yeah, this pond used to flood here, so we leveled it off, but it's it's not quite settled yet. So we thought we won't be able to pull the sumo through it. So Rob tried pulling Bill's disc through it, but because they don't, they're not mounted. It's got stuck, and he can't lift them up to go the way they work. So uh, we'll tow it out now. It's not ideal towing backwards, but it is only just stuck. So hopefully. It'll, uh, it'll come out, but we'll see. Yeah, easy. You see though all the, the pack of all the stop turning, so it's like acting like a brake. Our discs are mounted, you can lift them up. You can keep going. There we go. It took me longer to find the strap than get him out. There we go, back at it now. Really need to paint that though, the bonnet's so faded. Sounds well then. That fact about like, 90 odd percent of land, all Land Rovers ever made is still on the road. Well, I would go so far as to say that probably 99% of Batemans are all still out working as well. Neighbour out with his now. This is uh, one of my favourite fields. Looks great. It was wheat after OSR, so you can see the stalks in the bottom there. You can see them when you look across, white sticking up. Um, just putting some weed control on it now. Looks looking great. That's rattling them, which is really annoying. Keep me to put silicon on it. You can see, probably not because we're going too fast. But this has been munched by geese. When I get to the far end, you'll see what I mean. You'll see it just goes really short. And um, they've like chopped it off. It looks like it's been lawn mowered. 
In fact, I'll stop here and show you. In fact, what's clever actually is, if you look, if you look where the OSR stubble's been sticking up, it's not been easy for them to eat. See, they obviously don't want to poke their eyes out. But then, when you come next to it, you can see where they've chomped it off. It just looks like it's been cut, see? And then here, the tram lines. They've, they've really grazed it down. So nothing, at least it's got no disease in it. But yeah, that's the geese that. There they are, they're just flying off into the river. I wish they'd stay in there. A few there as well. They're like huge, they're like sheep. Looks to be like a major refurb going on on that house. You can see right through it. You think they just like knock it down and start again. It's going to have a really good view. It's got a view that way of the bridges. And then behind it's the river and right across like the bay. I don't know whether you can see, but that's across the river behind it. Remember that feel that Andrew didn't want us to drill? And he said, I'm not putting my name to this. Well, it looks fantastic. I'll show you the video of it being drilled now so you can see the extreme conditions we were drilling it. Just trying to drill now. Um, Andrew says he's taking no responsibility if it doesn't grow because he thinks it's stuck up a bit too much. But I think it's fine and it's flowing through the drill. So, yeah, looks okay to me. I knew it'd work. This is the field that we drilled a few it took us three attempts to drill it because we kept making too much mess anyway it's all there apart from the far corner up there where it's still very wet we're just hoping that once it gets older the last fertilizer it's had on it it might start to come up and flourish a bit more out of the stubble but yeah it's still a bit wet especially where we had to level out the ruts only thing about this sprayer is i put 50 well 130 acres worth in I've just sprayed four fields, it's took me three hours and I'm now starving. So when I left the yard at quarter to 10, sorry, quarter to 11, you think oh, I'll be back at dinner. Well, I'm not, I'm going to be back like an hour and a half after I used to be back. Is it straight? <laughs> James is here in class putting data tag on some of the things that hasn't got it on. It's straight to fence. Is that the smart water now going on? Like with the Scott unique up. DNA. Little grain of uh, what's it shows up. Oh, I see. It's got that little bit. UV. UV light. Look at those focus. None of that in the cab already, is it, Andy? So them little, um, <laughs> them little flecks. Then they've got codes on. Yeah. <laughs> unique code. Looks like the rest of my nuts and bolts have arrived. And my uh, aerosols are on my racket. I forgot to say, yeah, they're putting data tag on a load of the machines. So the higher value machines, like to this and the Zerion and things like that, and even the Corvus. If they've got data tag on them, then the insurance will knock. I think it was 15% off the insurance premium. So it basically pays for the data tag within the first year, if not a bit more. So class put them on for us, so they're out there now doing it. I should explain actually what data tag is. So it's a sticker with microchips in it. And then they put smart water and hide microchips inside like what you'd put in your dogs and pets. And then if ever the machine goes missing, it can be identified even if someone swapped the number plates or changed the chassis numbers because it's hidden all over the machine. So when they put it on the record on a database where they've hidden the microchips and where they've, they've put all the smart water and different things on so it can always be shown up and identified. This is the field of this champion after beans. Uh, there's the bean stubble through the middle there. There's the champion, looks amazing. And even the bit, I mean, it's floods there because it's a complete hollow, but even a bit here along the road can sometimes be a bit wet. Even that looks pretty decent. Um, it's held up all right, because normally you get some bad weather over winter that, that makes it lie wet and it floods, but because it was up and away before that happened, it's a little bit thinner, but it's all uh, probably giving a little bit more fertiliser kicking on a bit. But yeah, I'm really pleased with how this field looks. Looks mega. It's another one of the fields where the agronomist said that we shouldn't be drilling too early. And I didn't listen to him. I'm glad I didn't. 
just finished now spraying. I'm going to do this birthday bumper. It's mega. Oh, it's nearly 31,000. Got Ram, Rob Manford, 37. Tom Golding's on here. Ken Brundle, 98. Keith Gibson, 92. Amazing. Sam Bailey's 13. Scott Yeel, Yule, 37. John Fryer. Howie Bradley, 16. Stephen Johnson's 54. His sister Karen is 56. Uh, Eddie Murphy, that actually is the Hollywood actor. I don't know whether he watches, but someone's put him on here. Elliot Howe is 16. Harry Burberry's on here. Leo Brett is 15. Peter Norris is 46. And William Wyatt is 18. Amazing. Loads on it today. Wasn't many yesterday, but loads today. So happy birthday, everyone on there and anyone else whose birthday is today. I'm heading back to the yard now. That is it for me today, spraying, because I've got a meeting with John and James, obviously, who's been putting the data tag on today. He, it's us three that are doing the tractor run, John, sorry, combine run, John O'Groves to Land's End. So we're going to try and organise a little bit more of the detail around that, which is going to be looking like we're setting off on Sunday, the 4th of June or the 5th of June, is it? The th Whatever day the Sunday is in June, and hopefully we'll arrive in Land's End by the Thursday. That's the plans, put it in your diary. We will be passing down through uh, John O'Groats to, to Perth, Perth to Carnforth, Carnforth to the Cotswolds, the Cotswolds to Mid Devon, and then John uh, Land's End. Then the combine will be picked up and then it's gonna be on display at the serial show as well, which is pretty cool. So yeah, hopefully we might see you on the route and um, I'll certainly see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, click like, it's amazing. See you tomorrow.